All right, the final lecture for chapter 17. Chapter 17 is a pretty involved chapter here with the blood, kind of important stuff. Uh, last video lecture on blood typing. I'm just going to kind of hit some highlights here because I'm planning to do more with blood typing over on the anatomy or the lab side for the chapter. All right, so before you receive a blood transfusion, of course, your blood has to be typed and you have to know the blood type of the donor's blood as well. So how is this done? Um, you can actually use antibodies as tools to help you determine blood type. So in previous lectures, we talked about how if you have type A blood, for example, your blood contains anti-B antibodies or agglutinogens or agglutinins, I'm sorry, agglutinins, I'm sorry, that can attach to B molecules or B antigens on the surfaces of uh, donated red blood cells. Okay. That's not what we're worrying about here in terms of blood typing. When we're thinking about blood typing, you take the red blood cells of the person whose blood you're going to type and you deliberately mix them with large amounts of pre-made antibodies that you, can buy in, that you can buy commercially and you can use these antibodies as tools to help you determine blood type. And the reason for that is you can artificially in a laboratory cause this clumping of red blood cells to occur, this agglutination to occur by mixing red blood cells with those antibodies. So this can be done both for the ABO uh, blood type and also to figure out whether you have that RH factor on the surfaces of your red blood cells. All right, so remember if you have this, then your blood type is positive. If you don't have this, then you have a negative blood type. Um, another quick way to do it is called, another way it can be done is called cross-matching. All right, so if you know you've got uh, recipient blood and donor blood, or if you just have the uh, recipient's serum, remember that's the liquid portion of the blood with clotting factors removed, you can mix that with the donor's red blood cells or vice versa and see whether or not you have a reaction. That lets you know whether a donor's red blood cells would be suitable for donation. But more often this is what's done. This uh, type of thing that we see here. Alright, here's an example of a blood typing experiment done in a laboratory. Alright, so what you do is you take some of your blood and you smear it onto a couple of circles um, on a card or on a glass slide like you would work with in a laboratory. And then what you do up here where it says serum, it says anti-A and anti-B you are deliberately adding pre-made antibodies which are contained within a serum and a lot of times these come from other animals like goats and rabbits and horses and things that have mice that have been exposed to uh, human A antigens, human B antigens, those are foreign to those other animals and so they'll make antibodies to those and then you can purify those antibodies and uh, sell them for lots of money commercially and use them as tools to help identify people's blood types. Alright, so let's say you have type AB blood and then here on this glass slide or card or whatever it is you're working with in the lab, you mix some of the blood with anti-A antibodies. Then over here you mix the blood with some anti-B antibodies. Alright, well if, if this one clumps and this one clumps that lets you know these antibodies attached to the red blood cells in both cases. So that tells you that this blood had A antigens on its surface and it has B antigens on, its, on the surfaces of the red blood cells. So if you have both, then you have type AB blood. All right, let's say you have type A blood. Okay, so you've only got the A's on the surfaces of your red blood cells. When you mix the anti-A antibodies with your blood, it's going to clump because those antibodies are going to attach to the A's on the surfaces of your red blood cells. You don't have any B's, so these anti-B antibodies are not going to attach. You're not going to have any clumping. The reverse would happen if you had type B blood. Your red blood cells would clump with these anti-B antibodies would not clump with anti-A because you don't have any A's on the surfaces of your red blood cells. And finally with type O you don't have any A's or B's on the surfaces of your red blood cells 
So your blood should not agglutinate or clump with anti-A or anti-B antibodies. You can do the same thing with the RH factor. Okay, so you take some of your blood and you use an antibody that's called anti-D or anti-RH. Um, the R there are actually uh, several different RH factors that are different molecules that can be present on the surfaces of your red blood cells. And there's one particular type though that's responsible for your blood type being positive or negative, and that's RH factor D. So sometimes you'll see the uh, the types of antibodies that are used in a blood typing test to help determine whether you're RH positive or negative called anti-D antibodies, and that's the reason for that. All right, so if you have RH positive blood and you had some anti-D antibodies over here in a third little circle and if you saw clumping that would tell you yes you've got those RH factors on your red blood cells so you're RH positive if you didn't see any clumping then you would be RH negative so that's pretty straightforward um, and that is what happens in a typical laboratory when they do uh, when they figure out your blood type All right, so that actually concludes our uh, chapter on blood. Um, please don't forget if you're having, you know, some of the concepts in this chapter can be kind of difficult, so if you're having any problems, uh, let me know. I especially encourage you, as always, to post your questions over on Piazza so we can discuss those and all the students can benefit from your questions and our discussions.